please give a, a warm welcome round of applause, Major General Allison. So first I'd like to say good evening. And to the EOC, Ms. Johnson, the board members, I want to thank you because I typically don't take a lot of out-of-town events near this weekend. But this was one that I was hoping that it wasn't going to snow because that meant that I had to stay in Baltimore. But um, this was one that I really felt like I needed to be here because for me to be even put in the same breath as Dr. Martin Luther King, it's, it's an honor that I would have never thought that I would even even dream have, have been think, think, you know, thought of as a leader that was going to be doing what I did in Baltimore. And when you think of where I came from and where I am today, I'm hoping that all the young people are listening because education is absolutely most important. And when you don't have it, and you need it, you will know what I'm talking about. Because for a while, I didn't have my high school degree. And it was this uniform that allowed me to be able to get that. And it wasn't because I didn't like school, it was because circumstances led me to drop out of school. And so when I think of when I put this uniform on, I'm born and bred in the state of Maryland. I put the uniform on at the age of 17. Had no idea that I was going to work for a large consulting company and be a partner in that consulting company, of which I just retired from last year. And would end up leading the Maryland National Guard, which is the organization that took me off the street. And I'm leading it. And for the young lady that's getting ready to graduate, there has not been a woman before me to be in this position in Maryland. And you can do that. You can do anything you want. And for the young man that's going to go into the military, Come to Maryland. <laughs> I will recruit you. We'll make sure you go to West Point, young man. That's what you need to be thinking about. With grades like that, you need to be thinking about West Point. Or maybe one of the other service academies, but I like West Point better. They got a great cyber program. The reason why I say that is because those are the premier, I mean, you know, when you think if you're going to go to an academy, and it's at your fingers, but the reason why I hit on that, because there's not many of us that go. It's not. And so when I think about what this means for the honorees and for everyone here in the room, I know that we're coming through tough times. Baltimore was only a blip in the screen based on what we may have to go through in the future. But here's one thing that I absolutely know. We all have values that no one can take from us. We have a life that we have set for ourselves now. We are not going back. And if you allow someone else to take away from us what we've worked so hard to accomplish, then we have failed. And we've given up and we've gone home. And the one thing that this uniform has taught me is that I don't care where they send me in the world. I'm not giving up and I will go home when my job is done.
And so we have a lot of work to do. This is only the beginning for many of us. We have so much work that we have to accomplish. But for these young men and women that are coming behind us, they are the future leaders. What happens today does not matter. They matter. And what we do for them matters. And so we have to lift them up. We have to show them what it means to be strong, what it means to be leaders in a world that changes so quickly. And I can tell you, I've been to a number of other countries. And after you've gone to a number of other places, and when you see how bad things are, you know that we have it really well. We have it really well. And so, you know, I, we have a, a youth challenge program that we run in Maryland, that the military runs. About 26 states have them. And this is for high school dropouts. And I will tell you, for the parents in the room, when your children say that they don't want to go to school, when they say that they just can't do it, or when they say that it's too hard, don't give in to them. You need to continue to push them. We had a young man who came to that program, and after, after two weeks, he wanted to go home. And I tell you, it still hurts me to my heart, because he went home. And that next week, his mother had to bury him. So I'm going to tell you, perseverance, education, don't follow, be a leader. And when things get tough, just remember, it doesn't matter who wins. What matters is whether or not we can work through it, we can come to some level of consensus, and we're all standing at the end. And so, you know, when I think about my service members that are serving, and I'm sending them out the door, not every day, but maybe every other week. I pray to God that they come home. Because not all of them make it back. But the one thing I will tell you, every service member, they do it for the country they love, they do it for us to have our freedom. And they are gonna continue to do it so that we can have our freedom. And that, I know, because I watch every single one of them and I see what they do. And then when I had to ask all of my troops to get out on the street in Baltimore, they were happy to do it. Because it's a city that we love. It's a city that we work in almost every single day. And we said, our community needs us. It was a chance for us to do what we do well here at home. And that is to restore order as much as you think that we create war, but we're really there to restore order. And we did it in what I think was a, a way that made everyone proud. But I pray to God that I never have to do it again. because it set us back. And that's the kind of thing that I think about every single day. It sets us back. And so, as we think about what Monday brings and the celebration of Dr. King, just remember what he would want for all of us. What he would want us to stay focused on. and how he would want us to be able to achieve that. 
And I think he would say, dream big. Dream big and dream great. And so I want to thank you for honoring me. And to the other honorees, I want to say congratulations to you. But I will tell you that this is, it means a lot to me. So we had to, my husband had to drive me up here because I was, all I had was my mini today and I know it wouldn't have made it back through the snow. So I wanted to make sure that I was here, but I have to be back tomorrow because I'm honoring one of our soldiers who was lost when I was in Afghanistan. And I know that life is way too short. We seem to lose so many good people when they're young. And I know that that's what happened to Mr. Gray. And I understand all the circumstances around it. But sometimes, if we don't use our voice instead of something else, if we don't use our brain instead of harsh words, it puts us on the wrong side of things. And that's not what Dr. King would have wanted. So I hope that we all look at, we have a long ways to go and we have a lot of work to do. This is a time for us to be together, stand together as one and unite it. Thank you. Thank you.